So today we are graphing linear inequalities. If you remember, the graph of a linear equation is a line. The graph of a linear inequality is a line and a shaded region because there's going to be a lot of different possible answers that work as a solution for your inequality. And so it's going to be an area on our graph. I'll give you four examples so you can kind of see this in action. First one, y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 5. All right, the first thing we want to do is graph the boundary line, meaning pretend this is y equals 2x minus 5. What would the line look like? Well, my y-intercept would be negative 5. My slope is 2 or 2 over 1. So from here I go up 2, right, 1, over and over again. And I'll go the other way too. And it's greater than or equal to. So that means it can be equal to that value. So I'm going to put a solid line in here. OK? So any point on this line is a solution to this inequality. However, it does say y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 5, which means any point on the line, because it's equal to this, or anything bigger than 2x minus 5, meaning anything in this whole area. Anything on this side of the graph is a solution to my inequality. So the graph of a linear, equal in a linear inequality is a line and a shaded region because any point in this shaded region is a solution. And anytime we deal with graphs of inequalities, it's good to check a point in the shaded region and the non-shaded region just to make sure we didn't get things mixed up. All right, so I'm gonna pick an easy point. Let's pick this point right here, two, two, okay? So if I put two, two in my inequality, it should make a true statement. Let's see if it does. Two is y, two times the x value, which is also 2, minus 5. All right, so let's see. 2 times 2 is 4, minus 5 is negative 1. Is 2 greater than or equal to negative 1? Yeah, it is. So we know this point is a solution to our inequality, so it's part of our solution on our graph. All right, whereas let's say I picked another point over here in the non-solution section. That's 6, 1. If I put that into my inequality, I should make a false statement. Let's see. y is 1. 1 is greater than or equal to 2 times x, which is 6 minus 5. Let's see. 2 times 6 is 12. Minus 5 is 7. Is 1 greater than or equal to 7? Nope, it is not. So I know that's not part of my solution. So by testing one point in the non shaded region and one point in the shaded region, I can be assured that I shaded the correct side. All right? And that's what the graph of that inequality is going to look like. All right? Let's see another one. Now, this one says y is less than 2 thirds x plus 4. Notice the difference between this one and this one. Less than, and this one was greater than or equal to. So when we say less than, that means when we create our boundary line, we can't pick numbers or points on the line to be a solution because it has to be less than that line, all right? So when we make our line this time, we're going to draw a dashed line instead of a solid line. So let's do that. So y is less than 2 thirds x plus 4. My y-intercept is 4. My slope is 2 thirds, so up 2, right 3, up 2, right 3. And then continue it the other way, down two, back three, down two, back three. So here's my line. And like I said before, y has to be less than, not or equal to, just less than. So I'm going to put a dashed line here. And again, that represents that points on this line are not solutions, OK? Because it can't be on the line. It has to be less than the line. In other words, any point below this line. So this area is our solution. And that's what the graph of this inequality is going to look like. 
is going to be this dashed line for the boundary line and anything below that line. So if we pick a point somewhere in this shaded region, just like we did last time, here we'll pick 4, 2. Eh, let's pick 6, 2 because we want it divisible by 3. So if we use 6, 3 and put it into this, it should make a true statement. Y is 3 is less than 2 thirds times 6 is X plus 4. All right. 2 thirds of 6 is 4 plus 4 is 8. Is 3 less than 8? Yeah, it is. So we know 6, 3 is a part of our solution. All right. Whereas, let's pick something else. Uh, let's pick 3, 7. So notice this is not in our shaded area. So when we test 3, 7, it should make a false statement with our inequality. So let's try it. Y is 7 is less than 2 thirds times X is 3 plus 4. All right. 2 thirds of 3 is 2 plus 4 is 6. Is 7 less than 6? No, it's not. It's bigger than 6. So we know 3, 7 is not part of our solution. And if you look at our graph, that matches up because 3, 7 is not in the shaded region, but 6, 3 was. All right. And it's always good to double check one point, at least one point in each region, just to be sure. All right. Now you're probably thinking, well, why do I need to check it? It says greater than. It means above. This one says less than. It means below. Graphs aren't always that simple based on the equation. All right. And I'll give you a couple of examples here to show. These two equations aren't y equals equations. These are in standard form. So things get a little bit wonky here, so you kind of have to be careful. All right, so let's try these ones. We've got 4x plus 2y is less than or equal to 12. All right, so we've got the less than or equal to, so we know it's gonna be a solid boundary line. So let's start by graphing it. I'm gonna use the x and y intercepts to graph it. All right, if you don't know how to do that, I do have a video on graphing equations in standard form, which might be helpful. But here's what I do. Let's make x zero. And I'm gonna look for combinations of x and y that actually equal 12, okay? So if I make x zero, this whole thing zero, so what does y have to be so that 2y is equal to 12? It has to be six. So the point zero, six is on my line. And I'll find the y-intercept now. Let's make y zero. 2 times, y, 2 times y, in this case 0, 2 times 0 is 0, so 4 times what value of x would equal 12? 4 times 3 would equal 12, so the point 3, 0 has to be on our line. And just by finding the x and y intercepts, now I know what my line is going to look like, because the line has to go through those two points. There it is. All right. Now remember, I made it solid because it says less than or equal to. So points on the line are a solution, okay? Now, which side do I shade? Well, it says less than or equal to, so I'm thinking down below, but let's check to make sure, all right? So I'm gonna pick a point. I'm gonna pick an easy point. Let's pick one, one, all right? I mean, it doesn't get much easier than one, one. So I'm going to put 1 in for x, so 4 times 1 is 4, plus I'll put 2 in for y, 2 times 1 is 2, and that should be less than or equal to 12. Is it? Yeah, it is. So that tells me that's the side I need to shade in. So there's my inequality. All right. But... Just to be sure, it doesn't hurt to check one point on either side, right? Let's try this point, 4, 2, just to make sure. x is 4, so 4 times 4 is 16, plus y is 2, so 2 times 2 is 4, and that has to be less than or equal to 12. Is it? 16 plus 4 is 20. Is 20 less than or equal to 12? No, that's definitely not. So. We know that is not a solution, and notice that's in my non-shaded side. All right, that looks good. All right, but you can see how it's a little more confusing when you've got it in standard form. 
All right, last one, here we go. 5x minus 3y is greater than 15. Now notice, greater than, not greater than or equal to, just greater than, so this can be a dashed line. All right, so I'm gonna find my intercepts to graph this. If x is zero, y would have to be negative five, because negative three times negative five would equal 15. So zero negative five is one point. Oops, right there, <laughs> y-intercept. All right, now let's make y zero. What does x have to be so that 5x is equal to 15? It'd be three. So the point three, zero has to be on the line. All right, so this has to be our line right here. Zero, negative five, ignore that one. Zero, negative five, and three, zero. And it's just greater than, so I'm using a dashed line because points on the line are not a solution to our system. All right, so there, there's our boundary line right there. Okay, now the question is, which side do we shade? Well, this one's gonna surprise you a little bit. So let's think, well, it says greater than, so it's gotta be this, the area above it, right? So let's try an easy point like two, two. I guess we could have picked one, one, but two, two, we'll just try it, okay. So if I pick two, two and put it in here, five times x, five times two is 10, minus three times y, three times two is six, has to be greater than or equal to 15. 10 minus six is four. Four is not greater than 15. That is not part of our solution. Even though it says it's greater than 15, it's not part of our solution. All right, and this is why you can't always just look at the symbol and say, oh, it's bigger than, it's above, or it's less than, it's below. In this case, that didn't work. All right, now let's try another point on the other side just to make sure. Let's try here, six, one, okay? So x is six, so five times six is 30, minus y is one, so three times one is three, has to be bigger than 15. Is it? 30 minus three is 27. It is. So notice, in this situation, the shaded side is gonna be this side. This is the side that's gonna have all the solutions on it. All right, so this is a perfect example of why you always have to check a point on each side to make sure you shaded the right side because even though it said greater than, it the shaded region was below the line. All right. So when you're graphing inequalities, first draw on the boundary line, paying attention to whether it's solid or dashed, and then check a point on each side to figure out which side you need to shade in. Sometimes it's above, sometimes it's below, but you can't always trust the symbol to tell you which way to go. All right. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button and also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math and I will see you next time.